Hello everybody, welcome back to Best Books Ever. I am Tyler, and today we are going to be continuing Cirque de Freak by Darren Shan. Today is The Vampire Prince, The Vampire Prince, book six, I believe, so we are finally halfway there. Uh, yeah, good stuff. So I think last book it was like, okay. Not too much happened in terms of, like, actual content that I think carries forward to the rest of the series. Um, and that's not, like, spoilers or anything. That's more so just looking at it as it's mostly action, right? Mostly just the trials. This time, lots of stuff. This time, you know, I think I talked about this before, but I think uh, Darren, the author, sort of separates the 12 books into like four trilogies almost uh which is why i believe the movie that came out it covered the first three books and it's like ah it's kind of like one own thing and then the next three and then so on um this definitely feels like the end to another trilogy and like the beginning to you know setting up the rest of the story um because yeah there's there are quite a few ramifications especially the very end which we'll talk about right now because I completely forgot that this happened and this adds to such a crazy switcheroo of the book title, right? So, we're, you know, we're, we're thinking Vampire Prince and it's obviously about Curta, right? Curta did a lot of stuff. We'll talk about some of the stuff Curta did uh, as we go on, but... Turns out, the real vampire prince, and the one that matters even more going forward, is Darren himself. Completely forgot that this happened. Um, but yeah, it makes so much sense, because it's like, how do we get out of this, right? We, we could just turn a blind eye, let him go, but there'd be shame all around. And plus, like, he's not really, like, exonerated. Like, you, you know, technically, if, like, a general found him or something out in the wild living his life, like, he would be obligated to kind of bring him in, you know, so Darren would still kind of sort of be looking over his shoulder his whole life, so that's another aspect to it that I think would be, um, not good for him and anyone, really. Then you have, like, temporarily waiving the rules on the trials, you know, you have just outright, uh, giving him, like, amnesty, it's like, ah, yeah, these things, like, some of them are too large, some of them don't really work, um, some of them are sort of like a slippery slope, where it's like, how much are we going to do it, so them making him a prince, and it works even more so, because obviously we have the fact that princes can, you know, they can't really do whatever they want, but it does specifically get around the initiation, which, if that is clear, then him running away isn't like a crime or anything, because that was only a crime because of the initiation part, you know, it's like a, it's like a domino effect, so if the first domino doesn't exist, then it doesn't matter that the second domino fell, um, plus, people like him, you know, like, he has earned respect, he is not just this, um, you know, this, like, novelty of, like, ooh, it's like a, he's like a kid, vampire prince, not, not prince, uh, vampire assistant, uh, he's a half vampire, whatever, and even with, like him being with Krepsley is even crazier because Krepsley, uh, you know, always said that he would never take on an assistant. So there's lots of little aspects to it, and plus like him bringing along a little person and Harcat, like you know, there's so much, uh, you know, intrigue around Darren that it's like, but you know, does he have the respect? And and he did earn respect from Ara, which is really cool. And, you know, other people like him, kind of through Krepsley though, like Gavner and Saba and stuff like that. Um, you know, but as it's gone on, especially this whole debacle, he's like stood on his own two feet. It's not just because of who he's with, you know, especially Krepsley. Um, and, and, you know, it's not only because of the, the, uh, anomaly that is him. You know, we never see kid vampires ever because you're not supposed to blood children for many reasons. Um, and many of them are true with Darren himself. So, um, but this is great. 
that everyone is like, yes, we want you to become the prince. So uh, very fitting that Kurta, and we'll, you know, we'll get into Kurta because there's a, there's a pretty interesting conversation when it comes to Kurta, especially towards the end. Um, very fitting that one would die and it's like, we were going to make another prince, what happened there? And then we get Darren in. One question I do have though is like, is there... Is there like a number of princes there's supposed to be? Because in my head, I think of it as like a set number. I'm just supposed to be four, three princes, three princes. So in my head, it's like, okay, well, one of them is stepping down. It doesn't seem that way though. But then it's like, how many are there supposed to be? Like, can there be 20 princes at a time? Is that possible? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting going forward. You know, we'll kind of get deeper into predictions at the end. But I wonder how this will change, like, the course of the series. I wonder, you know, because they said it wasn't honorary. It was like, no, like, you know, we're going to take it slow. You know, he's new to our ways and all that. We're not going to crush him with the weight of everything that every prince, uh, you know, before him would have to deal with. But, it, you know... He's not a mascot. He is a prince, and he is going to have the duties and the the honor and, and you know, all, all that stuff. Um, you know, so like I said, we'll get into predictions in the future, but just something to think about. I also like the moment when that happened when Darren turned to Crapsley, and he was like, so so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be higher than you on the food chain. You're going to have to listen to me. You're going to have to do whatever I say. And Crapsley is like, well, yes, but also no. <laughs> He said, I, I, I will respect your decisions, but you, you're you not just going to push me around. <laughs> you, you know, he was like, you're still my assistant, which is very funny that, like, the prince is still an assistant to another vampire. Um, so, yeah, that was huge. Like, when it was leading up to that, I was, I was reading it, and I was like, oh, my gosh. They're going to make him a prince. That's the only way. What else is there? For a second, I was like, oh, they're going to fully blood him. But then I was like, I don't know how that would get him out of the situation. Like, I don't think full vampires have different, you know, like different, uh, like access to stuff or like different freedom when it comes to rules like that. I think they're all treated the same, whether you're half or a full. Uh, but that was my first thought. And then I think Paris was like, well, we, well, you know, well, you know, we, we're not changing the laws, so we're gonna have to put him above the laws. How do we do that? And it's like, oh, Prince, got it. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's really just, you know, it's really just current at this point. It's really everything. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll get into the Curtis stuff. So where did this all start? Curtis a traitor. I guess we'll kind of lump all this together because there's a few different points here, but Kurt is a traitor. Um, at first, it was very hard to see. I think I did talk about this, though. Maybe in the last book or something. I think maybe one of the vampires also briefly mentioned it. I was like, oh, this will be crazy. But, you know, the word traitor did come up. I'm like, there has to be someone. In, you know, because I think maybe they were talking about, like, the Vampanese and, like, there's a couple here. Like, what's going on? Like... You know, so Kurt being the traitor is huge. It, I mean, it makes complete sense in hindsight, even without his explanation. Um, like, how were they able to get in? Well, Kurt is the map guy. So he would be the front runner in terms of making it so Vampanese, people who are not familiar with the mountain, are able to sneak into the mountain. Uh, you know, and also not get lost or dead end or whatever. Um, it does suck. Right, because we're reading this book from Darren's perspective, and Darren liked Kurta. You know, there's some things that Darren did not agree with Kurta on, but there are some things that he was definitely more open to, and I think that's also a big reason why Kurta wanted to bring Darren onto his side. You know, I think at the end of the day, Kurta is not an evil man, and I think most of the vampires would agree on that. Um, he just wanted change, right? He wanted there to be change, and it's funny, even Darren mentioned this, uh, I don't think he said anything, but he was he was thinking it, of like, 
there's a couple moments at the end of this book that are inside and change uh, within the laws and everything like that. And it is funny that it took Curtis death, the one who wanted change the most for there to actually be some spark of it. Um, and again, not his death in terms of that he was a martyr, like the vampires killed him or whatever, like the vampires themselves killed one of their own and then incited the change that Curtis was maybe trying to spark for all these years. So very strange, but like I said, at, at the end of the day, I think Curtis had very, very good intentions. I think that he was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, you know, like he said, things could have turned out differently, right? What I have done may have caused the war, may maybe pushing it forward, right? But he has to try because at the end of the day, it was going to happen either way. Like this war was going to happen. So I did everything I could to try to prevent it. Even if at the in the end it meant us compromising somewhat or, you know, whatever. Some people not being happy, you know, some of our own vampires he even mentioned like the princess, he was going to poison them. I would sacrifice tens, hundreds of our own if it meant everyone else and like the the race, both vampires and vampires as a whole surviving to see future generations. Um, I think he did some things very wrong. <laughs> maybe should have included some people, maybe should have, you know, he, he was going to be a prince, you know, I mean, I don't know, he, he, he said that it was over, but like, that day he was going to be a prince like i don't i don't know he he very well could have just waited for that or a prince and then been like okay i'm a prince now y'all the princes have to have to listen to me for real now you know like i i am on equal footing as you listen here's all the thing and, and, and again like he withheld information you know with the vampire lord the vampanese lord which we'll get into in a second of like y'all may not have agreed with my ways and what i've been trying to do these past few years or whatever um you know you'll be able to maybe brush it off a little bit just because i've been just a general this whole time but now i'm a prince and on top of that here's some more information to really push you over the edge to make you understand that this is real and this isn't just like some fantasy of mine that i'm trying to do world peace and all that like no i'm i'm, I'm doing it because i'm trying to save us um not just for my own ideals but for the you know trying to prevent the extinction <laughs> of vampires and vampires so sad that he had to die at the end of the day but there was really no other outcome once it got to a certain point there was nothing else to be done um you know he said either way he was going to die because he was a traitor either way but it's like in another timeline things would have went differently maybe this war would have been uh you know prevented in as a whole but i don't know speaking of the vampanese lord they say he's been found six months ago he's been found he's a human um i don't know if they said he specifically i don't know if they gendered the vampanese lord but you know you assume i guess i don't know just because most vampires are like it's very rare to see a female so you just kind of assume um now see this kind of gets into predictions right but like just staying here who is the vampanese lord is it someone special is it someone that they're gonna be like whoa it's 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 this guy <laughs> or is it just gonna be some some rando you know either way i don't think who it is is that important i think just the fact that the lord exists and it's real now, you know, they use like the coffin of fire or whatever. It's like, oh, it's real. Like, it, it's not just some tall tale by, by uh, you know, Mr. Tiny that most people believe. But they're like, eh, it doesn't mean it's now. <laughs> it can be decades from now, right? Like, Mr. Tiny is a god, maybe. So soon to him could be hundreds of years. We don't know. Um, it is scary. It is scary now that the Lord is real, um, because now it's like, oh, things start coming together with what Mr. Tiny's prophecy, with what Curta was trying to prevent, and now now makes it very real. It makes it very, like, preparations are needed now. Not just the stuff that we do every day, day in and day out. It's like, no, 
all hands on deck, right? We talked about, uh, it was mentioned that like Seba is not going to retire. Paris isn't going, you know, going to go out on adventures or whatever. Like everyone's here. Everyone has a part to play. Even uh, Vanez, the dude who's blind now is like, can't leave now. <laughs> can't, can't go out and die honorably like a blind vampire would. Now I have to stay here and help and, um, not really have to, more so want to, but but still, it's like, you know, this is my duty now, and we, we need everyone, because we don't know how this is going to end, you know, we don't know what we need, what we don't need, um, so, very interesting, um, I guess I didn't mention it, but I'll say it, Kurt, you know, Kurt was executed, um, Again, different laws might not have executed him. At the very least, might have just let him die honorably. Um, I don't think there's a situation, again, even if their laws were different, I don't think there's a situation in which people would be comfortable with him like, oh, we're not going to kill him, but we're going to give him life in prison or something. I don't know. Um, I don't think prison exists. <laughs> with vampire but again in a in a slightly alternate universe of vampires where their laws are different um you know i think maybe that would have sufficed maybe i don't know i don't know um you know because i think after everything his whole speech and you know some of the information that he gave up at the end there most vampires seem like ooh, we are affected by the things you are saying <laughs> We don't think you're just some, like, evil scum that deserves to rot forever. Do you deserve to live? Eh, that's, that's kind of up in the air. But, um, you know, again, I think this was, you know, me talking about this book being much more important and much more influential to the rest of the series than the last book is. Again, just because last book was mostly action and, you know, uh, I think this is one of the reasons why I'm like this, you know, we, you know, we, we might start seeing change and Darren could very well be the main instrument in that change. I guess we'll just have to see. Um, and I guess blending right into that, we have the moment, we have a couple different moments in the book towards the end there, towards like the second half where Darren is very conflicted about the killing. Um, you know, he wanted revenge more than anything, especially for Gavner. And then for what, you know, the prospect of what the Vampanese could do, you know, if they, if they wanted to, right? Like ended up killing Krepsley or something like that. And then he kills someone for the first time and he is horrified. Um, he looks at them and he thinks that they could be evil. They could have deserved it or they could be like him and they could just be caught up in a situation that was out of their control and now they're dead for it. Um, and it, you know, it kind of messes him up for the whole rest of the book, right? Um, you know, towards the end there, there's, there's some happiness and some joy and some like disbelief with him being a prince, but the death I think is going to weigh on him next book for, for sure. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. Couldn't think of the word sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to. Um, you know, cause then again, he looks at Curtis and this is before Curtis speech, right? This is before Curtis trial. So now we're looking at it post Curtis trial and it's like, again, some of what Curtis was saying is true. You know, some of our ways need to change. We are stuck in the past, not like a decade ago, like hundreds and hundreds of years ago past. So it's like things need to change. You know, there are specific scenarios that don't involve us ignoring the rules or ignoring the laws that we are founded upon. But, you know, there, there's some gray areas. There's also different situations that calls for, you know, different variations of, of the law or the punishments or the, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and so it's like, did we have to kill those vampires? And then after the trial, you realize that those were the 40 vampires that were actually not on our side, but willing to talk and like wanting to come to some sort of, um, you know, agreement, even if it was a forced agreement, it was going to be something that saved everyone, uh, you know, because those were the main ones that didn't want a war and were trying to find some other way instead of 
raising the vampires lord and having them just annihilate every vampire on earth and those are the ones they killed so it's like again it's hindsight's 2020 20, right like you know it's very common saying very very easy to look in the past and be like oh we should have done this clearly but you know maybe if some things were established i mean even darren said that to Saba, right where it's like six months ago a year ago 10 years ago it's like why didn't the princes try they didn't even try to talk to the vampire they didn't even try to have a sit down and be like listen i don't want war i'm pretty sure y'all don't want war either i don't want any more vampires to die I'm pretty sure y'all don't want any more vampires to die like we no matter who wins in the end no wh- whether it's vampires or vampires whoever wins whoever comes out on top that means that the other side is completely annihilated decimated and it also means that the winning side is going to take heavy 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 casualties it's like neither one of us want that can we come to some sort of agreement we don't have to live together all happy and everything we can have our differences but is there a way for us right and you know maybe last book book before i don't know you know, there were comparisons to humans, right? Where it's like humans have gotten too big. There's 8 billion of us. It's impossible for us to look at each other as one unit because there's just so many of us spread out so far. Whereas vampires and even vampires, altogether, there's only like a few thousand of them. So it's like, even within that, we can have differences, but can we be under one umbrella again? Is that possible? What do we need to do? You know, um, even that little attempt wasn't wasn't made, you know. It was just all right. They're gone. Whatever. So it's it's, it's that stuff. That that little wedge between them that has just grown bigger and wider. That that is that is you know, going to end up in many more deaths. We we you know we think we've seen a lot so far. We haven't seen nothing. Um. And yeah, and then speaking of that, sort of in like the ways, um, I love the little section with Darren recovering with his, you know, with the wolves, the whole pack and everything. Uh, it was, it was really cool. Uh, very reminiscent of like some other books that we've read on here. Um, I don't want to name them because I guess that might be a spoiler, but um, kind of you know kind of similar to stuff that we've seen main characters have to deal with in, in, in previous books that, that we've read. Um, but specifically I want to point out how there was a moment where Darren felt like vampires can learn a thing or two from wolves. Small differences, but just like, they're still very harsh, they still have honor, they still have a code, but it's not so extreme, right? Like, there's a moment where, uh, you know, where the one wolf, like, challenged Streak, right? Because, like, Streak is, like, the alpha of the pack or whatever, he's, like, the leader of the pack, I don't know. And he challenged him, and... Streak won, and the challenger bowed their head and was like, "All right, you win." And you know he, you know he was kind of ostracized for like a couple days or whatever, like kind of put aside, like, "Hey, you're you're being punished for trying to, uh, you know, challenge our leader, right?" But then afterwards, you know, they they hunt and they they regroup and everything's fine. So it's like the difference there is if that were to happen to a vampire, which it sort of did with Curta, right? Um, execution. Even in the face of change, in the face of shame, after learning everything that Curta was trying to do, not only his intentions, but like why he was doing it, all that stuff, and you can clearly tell that none of the princes, and even many, maybe even most of the vampires in attendance, didn't really feel like the hall of death was necessary you know they thought that was maybe a little too much they still did it because they were like well that's our tradition (laughs) that's what we got to do you know it's like ah but but is it though you know you know so i like that in the beginning of the book where we kind of see that and you know it's not a perfect parallel between the two situations but it is just darren again thinking about things you know and i think that's why he will make a good vampire prince because he's gonna make mistakes he's very inexperienced but i think he has pieces of both you know i think him coming up under krepsley 
he definitely has a lot of those very hard, rigid vampire ideals instilled in him. Whether he agrees with every single one, he still has them. But then he, him being young, him being, uh, you know, I think him being a child half vampire is like a double-edged sword, right? We know all the bad stuff that's come of it, right? Like, stuff that has made him be very, very angry and very, very regretful of what he's done. But also the good stuff, too, of, like, I'm young. Like, I, I don't see the things the way you see them. I don't necessarily agree with everything that Kurda is saying, but I do understand why he feels that way. And so it is sort of like the bridge between both. Um, so that's cool. And lastly... Uh, just a small tidbit. Uh, nothing, nothing too important. Just something I wanted to note. Uh, a guardian, guardian of. What were the guardians of? Blood, death, something like that. Uh, a guardian saved Darren from a couple vampires. Uh, didn't do anything too big. They just kind of like. Like, pulled them out of the way from being seen of a couple vampires or something. Um, wasn't anything too crazy. It was just a very very small gesture. Uh, but I just wanted to mention it because the Guardians are interesting. Um, and I think I mentioned it last time where it's like, how necessary were these characters? Uh, was this like group of characters to the book? Was it just like an easy way to explain away some things? Or, you know, do they have more more consequential actions throughout the story? And, you know, I, I, I guess there was one there, right? Where they did kind of say, again, we don't know exactly what would have happened if the Guardian wasn't there. But definitely helped Darren stay quiet for a few extra seconds, um, you know, and not get spotted while he was in the tunnel. So I thought that was cool. And I wonder if we'll see any more of them anytime soon. I wonder if we'll like get some sort of deep dive into them, you know, very similar to Hard Cat where it's like, will we ever know anything more about the little people? Probably not. Who cares? And then all of a sudden book four or whatever, uh, Hard Cat speaks, <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, we're, we're learning more than we learn about like his mission and like how little people are made and all this stuff we're like oh this is this is really fun um again you know we already know some stuff about the guardians because they uh just have more information openly available just with our eyes um than the little people do you know with the little people being tiny's sort of uh you know battalion or whatever uh but you know just some fun stuff there more characters so um but yeah, that is the book. Uh, good stuff. Like I said, I did. Uh, I did really enjoy this. This was good. We're at a halfway point now, so I don't say stuff is starting to ramp up. I mean, every book so far has had some really, really good moments, uh, emotional moments, one way or the other. So I don't want to say that was all. The first half of the series has been bland. That's not true. Um, but you can tell with the war in particular, it's like, oh, this seems to be the kickoff to it. If what everything Curtis said is true, which I'm assuming it is, this was the last hope to avoid war. To possibly, again, even in his own words, he's like, it might not have worked, it might have been a failure, blah, 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 right? But that seemed to be the last hope we had. So, uh, predictions. Predictions for next book. Next book is called The Hunters Hunters of the Dusk. We're going to read the whole book, as always. Uh, what do I think? I think that we're going to see Darren being a prince. Um, him maybe struggling with that a little bit. Not like struggling in a crazy way, just sort of like, yeah, what do I, what do I do here, like, how does this, you know, how it's affecting his life, I'm sure it's going to give him a lot less free time, because like I said, um, it didn't seem like they were going to burden him with the full responsibility of a prince, like, he still has a lot to learn, a lot to experience, but he's a prince, so, probably a little bit of that, um, a lot of preparations, I assume, you know, I feel like there's going to be a different energy in the mountain going forward where normally like this, this meeting would happen and then vampires would disperse and you know the next full meeting of vampire mountain happens every 12 years right it was 12 years so it's like we'll wait <laughs> uh you know goodbye everybody right but now with the vampanese lord at hand 
it's like I wonder if I wonder if the majority of vampires will stay to sort of like prepare and train and make plans or whatever you know I don't remember how deep they're gonna get it like you know are there like war tactics that we're gonna see are there like battles or whatever like I don't I don't really know um mostly to try to figure out a way to combat combat the Vampanese Lord because it's like well Mr. Tiny's prophecy is that Vampanese Lord will, will rip us all apart so what can we do about that you know um I mean, I think that the easiest, <laughs> unfortunately, I think the easiest, mm, simplest might be a more correct word. Simplest way to do it would be, he's still a human. Y'all are vampires. Kill him. You know, I, I, a human is no match for a vampire. Uh, the strongest human is still going to have trouble against the weakest vampire. You know what I mean? Um... You know, I mean, it's going to be hard, obviously. I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's guarded by a million, by 80% of the Vampanese population at all times is <laughs> guarding the Vampanese Lord. But, I mean, if what Mr. Tiny said is true, like, if you imagine that once the human gets fully blooded, it's over. <laughs> you know, like, there is no more hope after that. So... Um, there's probably gonna be some sort of plans around that. Again, not necessarily that. I don't know that they're gonna try to kill him or whatever, but, um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sure there's gonna be some sort of plans. Hunters of the Dusk, I don't know what that means. I mean, it, it just sounds like a vampire thing. Vampires are hunters. They hunt humans, right? Or whatever. Um, dusk, right? That's like once the sun goes down. So it's like, is that just like another word for vampires? I don't know. Um... Other than that, though, I don't really know. Yeah, because like, those are the two biggest things. Is there becoming a vampire and the Vampanese Lord being announced, I guess, in some way. Not really revealed, but somewhat announced. So, um, yeah, that's probably it. Let me know what you thought of that book, The Vampire Prince. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, any predictions for the next book? Uh, remember to read the whole thing, front to back. And uh, that is it. Until next time, we will see what happens with Darren and the Prince. Do we finally see who the Vampanese Lord is? Um, I guess we'll see. Hopefully the vampires don't make more dis bad decisions and they can adapt accordingly.